what we do know in a big European study is that obviously smoking is not good for your lungs and it's also not good for your sinuses. But that is an explanation for chronic rhinosinusitis without nasal polyps rather than for with nasal polyps. What we see in nasal polyps is obviously that the so-called microbiome plays a role, uh, specifically Staphylococcus aureus colonization and intramucosal growth of Staphylococcus is associated with especially the severe form of nasal polyps. Uh, you may uh, have, of course, some anatomical variations within your nose and paranasal sinuses, which may uh, show a tendency to mucus retention, to uh, uh, deviate the, uh, the uh, airflow in the nose and then promote uh, mucus formation, which then leads to edema. But uh, basically the true reasons for uh, or origins of chronic rhinosinusitis with polyposis are fairly unknown and there are still uh, debates going on about the uh, origin of where these polyps coming from. I mean, we know the basic mechanisms of edema, inflammation, uh, uh, polyp formation and uh, whether these polyps are then large or are small are still uh, amenable to a medical treatment but the uh, basic origin where all this uh, disease which usually does affect the upper airway tract comes from is still uh, unclear but there are good clinical and basic studies going on to assess that and we hope that uh, by the end of this decade we have more information. It appears to be a combination of factors. There is a genetic contribution where individuals may be more likely to develop chronic sinusitis, and we do see more chronic sinusitis in families where there's chronic sinusitis. However, added to this is the idea that there are bacteria that come from the external environment that can contribute to the development of disease, and that it's these two factors together which will lead to the ongoing symptoms and which explain why a simple antibiotic or simply performing surgery alone to remove the diseased tissue will not be effective.